we open up on Thanksgiving and we cook a Thanksgiving dinner for free for who, anyone who wants to come. We open on Christmas because we're from here. We can spend the mornings with our families and we know after you spend the morning with your family, you need a beer. And let's face it, you live and work in Washington, D.C., you need a drink. My name is Clara Ritker, and I'm an amateur cook, professional eater, and documentary filmmaker. For 10 days, I took a train across the country to tell the stories of revitalizing communities through the lens of food. This is The Great American Cooking Story. Americans love to make fun of Washington, D.C. You know the jokes. Southern efficiency and northern charm. Even the politicians make them. So where better to culminate my exploration than my own backyard? The place where I started. The place where all problems go to die. Welcome to our nation's capital. Let's eat. We are a restaurant that when you walk in, you probably would expect chicken wings and nachos and not uh, seared duck and, uh, and things that are a little fancier. The neighborhood kind of told us that they wanted a more of a sit-down restaurant uh, when we were uh, talking with them. And so that's, that's kind of what we, we built. You would never think to come into a bar and do a five-course tasting meal for $100, and we've done it. And so it's kind of a, a credit to our chefs to be able to do that, but also our customers who, you know, many times people come in here and they just want a simple chicken wing, you know? But we don't have that. And, they keep coming back and, and we've kind of turned them on to, hey, try some other things. And so I'm really more impressed with that, 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 that the food that we want to do is actually being ordered and eaten. So, so what is he making right now? What are you making, Jorge? Uh, this is going to be the taco that we do for happy hour. Oh yeah, happy, happy hour taco. Like DC Reynolds, Petworth Citizen is a bar that cares about what you put in your body. But what makes both of these bars unique isn't so much the food as it is the commitment to serve the community beyond what they're putting on the plate. I love Washington and I want Washington to be a great city and I have the ability to open businesses that can really affect that. Petworth is a neighborhood that needs that kind of investment. It was not always a place where you could find artisanal cocktails and gastropubs. In fact, what was once a vibrant African-American neighborhood with department stores and a bank is now somewhere in between its period of abandonment and thriving metropolis. I think the easiest single event would be the assassination of Martin Luther King and the riots that followed in Washington. And some of the established businesses at the time, especially ones that were part of larger corporations, they just said, well, you know, rather than repair and rebuild, we're just going to move. And I think that led to a slow decline. And then an event that really set the stage for how this could be brought back would have been the opening of the Georgia Avenue Petworth Metro Station. When we opened the restaurant, we expected that the Metro Station went in here you know, a decade or so ago. This was an area that was going to get some development. Some, some companies were going to come in here and, and buy up a half of a block and put in a condo building or an apartment building. As you get more restaurants, you actually become more of a destination. We probably in our first year on a nightly basis would get someone from the neighborhood saying, how's it going? I, I'll come here one more time a week if that helps. You know, They didn't have but one restaurant or bar to go to for years. The more things that come to this neighborhood, the more people will come to the neighborhood because there's amenities. The big question though is how do you keep the neighborhood a welcome place for the old residents as new ones start moving in? I'm going, good to see you. When I open a restaurant, my goal is to be part of that community and it's really to respond to our neighbors first and foremost. And then if people come from outside of the neighborhood, then that's all the better. Um, but really, for instance, Petworth Citizen is really meant to be a neighborhood bar. You know, we have the reading room where we do all sorts of events. Slim's Diner, which is our new diner, that's really designed to be a place for the community to meet and it's going to be very accessible from a price point perspective. I love restaurants because of what they can do for a neighborhood. 
two of our restaurants will be in places that were vacant. There is an energy that restaurants bring in. Three booths in that window and then three booths in the center. So seat 41. Paul is opening a new diner on the block, and to figure out the design of the space and the menu, he surveyed the neighborhood. Yeah, like actually got 800 people to provide input on things like the type of chairs they wanted. When he says he cares about responding to the community, he means it. One of the things that we wanted to do was be the community center for the neighborhood, right? And so, you know, in, in a lot of neighborhoods, um, maybe in the suburbs, people meet at church or the library or at school. Well, the people that were here in the neighborhood and that are coming here in the neighborhood aren't doing those sorts of things. Uh, and the local bar, the neighborhood bar, is kind of becoming the community location. We do this happy hour for that purpose. When we opened, we wanted to make people stay here for longer than one beer. So we do buy one, get one free. It's not half off. Half off to us meant someone would come in, drink a beer and leave. But we didn't want that. We wanted people to stay here so that I could introduce Tom to Mary and Jim to Bob because they probably live on the same block. And it's worked. Within months, we started seeing little odd, peculiar things that you don't typically see in a bar. Guy comes in with a rake because he borrowed it from his neighbor and he's bringing it back and they're just meeting here to get a beer and, 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 and give the tool back, right? Now, 75% of the people come here know someone when they walk in the door. See, Paul and Jeremy are not your typical, hey, let's open a swanky eatery in a rough neighborhood because it's hip and cheap kind of restaurant people. And maybe it's just good business, but they care. They aren't interested in being part of the DC narrative that pushes minorities out of neighborhoods to make way for a new identity. They think about their impact. And they know that with change comes a lot of challenges. Gentrification is a really difficult issue, right? And it, it is... Um, it is here in Washington, you know, and I'm part of it, you know, as, as I open restaurants, as I do businesses, that leads to changes in the neighborhood, leads to um, upward pressure on rents, that sort of thing. And so, but at the same time, the cities are places that change. Do I lament the fact that, that it's becoming more expensive, that people who grew up in Petworth, for instance, can, can not, some of them can no longer afford to live here. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a regrettable um, part of kind of city life these days. I think that there will always be in this city a, a problem with, with housing and how much it costs. We're a very, very small city. We're restricted by height. A lot of people in this town make a lot of money. A lot of people in this town don't make any money. The big thing that, that I can do as far as pressures for change in the city is by coming in and opening restaurants that and other businesses that respond to um, all sorts of people in the neighborhood. And so, it's, so that's my goal, is to have it not just be for people who you might call the quote unquote new people who are moving in, but I'm looking to have restaurants, bars, bookstores, diners that appeal to folks who have been here for a long time. That's something that I stress when we hire new folks, is that you know, we are looking for you to be a part of the community. In fact, um, three quarters of our employees live within about a mile and a half of our restaurant. You know, where we try to just play a small role is to employ people from the neighborhood. Almost everybody that works here uh, walks to work. We are a little microcosm of what this neighborhood kind of is, um, but it's going to change, right? And it's these these developers are coming in there and they're building tall apartment buildings and condos, and, and those are intended to be people that have money. Um, and so it's going to bring more of more affluency to the neighborhood. Um, but I think that that's good. That, that it's going to create more jobs for everybody, right? And there are a lot of people in the neighborhood who don't have work or, or, or are underworked. Um, and, and to be able to bring more opportunities I think is a good thing. Um, and it's bringing more money to the local schools, to uh, the small businesses. And it makes, if everybody's thriving, the whole neighborhood rises, I, I believe.
We don't really know what the future of Petworth will look like, but I do know one thing. In every community I visited along my journey, the future will be shaped by the people behind the food. All you gotta do is give somebody good food and good drink and good company.